Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Finchy Fridays. Now if you're wondering why I've got a sort of Christmas uh, backdrop behind me, I did explain it in last week's video, so um, you can go check that one out. Now, during the whole wedding day, so you might be there for 12 hours, um, I find that I have, I will always have two, but sometimes three occasions where I need to record audio. So sometimes that is at uh, preparations, so groom prep and bride prep. The second occasion will be the ceremony, and that's why, and that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. And the third occasion is speeches. Now I'm going to show you all my audio gear that I've got that creates perfect audio every time, all the time. <laughs> If you haven't already please like and subscribe to my channel i try to release a video every friday if not it's every other friday and uh, this channel is mainly wedding related but it's sort of documenting what i'm doing in my own video production company or as i said in my previous videos more of a digital media company now so let's have a look at my audio equipment that i use at a wedding ceremony now i've got it all laid out in front of me but i'll just sort of go through them one by one um, so we have got the Zoom H5, you'll see a bit of a, uh, a brand thing here, I've got a Zoom H1, so I've got one of each of those, I've got a Zoom F1 um, lapel mic, and I've actually got, I actually used two of these, um, along with these stickies, but I'll get to that shortly. Um, one of the well, I've got six of these, six of these bad boys, the Sony TX650, and I label them up um, on the back. I've got um, this Rode, um, I can't remember what's called now, Mic Pro, um, which I bought a few years ago, and I've also got a Rode, um, I think it's the NTG4. Um, which I'm using now to record this audio. Uh, but don't worry, all my equipment that I use at weddings is on my website, nickfinch.co.uk. Um, a link is in the description below. So let's talk about how I actually use these. So first of all, let's talk about who usually does the talking first. Um, and that is the registrar. So my go-to uh, microphone for the registrar is the Sony TX650. Um, great bit of kit, very popular um, in the UK for, for the UK wedding videographers. Um, I have seen seen some videos um, from America, um, and I know the Americans kind of like to record. Or well, this is only what I've seen. I could be completely wrong. Um, but what I've seen in ceremonies in America is they use a lot of, use a lot of microphones um, and they like to record straight off the soundboard, whereas in the UK, I've rarely come across that. So um, I always mic the registrar or the vicar. Got a vicar on the other day, um, just ed literally editing that video now as we speak. Um, because as many of you know, when it comes to so sometimes priests and vicars, um, they like to be to they like to tell you what to do rather than being told what to do. But I did manage to get a microphone on them. We have come together to witness the marriage of Danny and Sophie. But um, yeah, long story short, whoever's doing the ceremony, clip one of these onto them, and the only bit that you usually see is the the clip itself. Um, like that. So, but you know, the registrar can just tuck it onto their jacket pocket or shirt. Um, and especially with social distancing, I only if I've got the back camera sort of getting a wide shot of the front um, is when you see the registrar. Usually I might just have a sh back shoulder anyway. So, um, you know, that's never in shot. Um, so the next person that I will put a microphone on is the groom. Now, 
I've never shot a same sex ceremony. Okay, so I can only do it from my experience. So I haven't had to come across two brides wearing dresses before. Um, so to mic the groom up, I I choose to use the Zoom F1. Now this is a great, um, it's called a field recorder, great field recorder. This one records at 24 bit, where these Sony ones, they're only 16 bit, but are perfect for, for the job. Um, Zoom have, well, probably about six months ago, could even be a tad longer, um, released the, F, the Zoom F2, which I think records at 32 bit. Um, but this one is suitable for my needs. Um, I won't be upgrading that anytime soon. Um, but a few years ago, I did do a video on how I actually attach these to the groom, but basically use one of these stickies, um, sticks on one side of the microphone, and the other side goes in their jacket pockets, sorry, inside their jacket, and this goes in their jacket pocket. And the best thing about this is you can't see the microphone on the groom. Take you, Catherine Rhiannon Terry. Take you, Catherine Rhiannon Terry. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. So, this microphone will also pick up the bride as the bride is standing next to the groom. Usually requires a little bit of uh, boosting in, um, in post-production, um, but because it records at 24 bits, it's such good quality, um, you know, with a little bit of tweaking, you can get like perfect audio for the bride as well. Hi, Catherine Yan on Terry. Take you, Nathan Lee Bynan. Take you, Nathan Lee Bynan. To be my wedded husband. Okay, <laughs> to be my wedded husband. So they're the three main people who talk, the registrar or whoever's doing the ceremony, the groom and the bride. So I've got two microphones that covers that. Now, a lot of the time, uh, we have someone doing a reading or two people doing a reading, even potentially three people doing a reading. And that's why I have six of these. And um, literally five minutes before the ceremony, I just speak to the groom and say, oh, can you just let me know who's doing the reading? Um, usually in the pre-meeting that I do with couples six weeks before the ceremony, um, before their, yeah, before their wedding, they tell me, you know, who's doing a reading, their names and stuff. So I'll take all those notes down, and then I'll go to the then I'll go to the groom on the day and say, "Ah, oh, can you just let me know who Steve is, who Angie is? You know, give the names so it looks a bit more professional rather than say, oh, how many people is doing the the readings and stuff?" Um, and always double check that they haven't added any more on as well. Um, but that's where these are so handy. Um, I've had it on clipped on to women before, and sometimes their hair covers covers the microphone clip. Harden to the extent that we love. Love is knowing that even when you are alone, you will never be lonely again. And great happiness of life is a conviction that we are loved. Um, if not, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's too much of a big deal if it does show it slightly. Um, at the end of the day, it's a wedding rather than a you know film set. Um, so you can, you know, you only do the best you can on the day. Um, but I highly recommend, I'd say at least four of these, um, but six, maybe a little bit overkill, but um, I purchased four and I had two, one of my friends was selling her wedding videography equipment and she had two um, that I bought off her for quite a good price. Um, but normally these are 89 pound anyway, so less than a hundred pounds um, real handy bit of kit to just to record that great bit of audio. Um, sometimes I boost a bit of the bass up and clean up the audio slightly, but nothing dramatic, doesn't take too long. Um, so like I said, awesome bit of kit there. So that's covered the main people who are doing the readings, in the, doing the talking in the ceremony with... Um, what I'd probably call the primary source um, audio. But what happens if one of these bad boys doesn't record properly? That's where I have my backup microphones. So, Zoom H5, um, 
I either put this on the main table, you know, cer ceremonies can be completely different um, from each wedding, but I'll put one of these on the um, sort of table closest to where the bride and groom are standing and try and hide it behind some flowers if there's any, if there's any flowers there. Or if they have got microphones, that's where I will plug um, into the soundboard, either with this microphone or this micro or this microphone, depending on um, what leads I have and what their sound system system has. I've got a ton of leads uh, which work both for which work with both of these. Um, so I just play it by ear, see what works best. But to be honest, I hardly plug into the soundboard. So I have this on the main table, um, and depending and depending on if um, there's a separate table little stand where um, where you have some readings up at one of these on. The circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It is speaking words of appreciation. And if for whatever reason there may be another place, I'll use whatever spare um, of these I have just by where, just as close as I can, where they're going to be doing the reading as well. Pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. Some people even take these to the microphones themselves. I haven't yet done that, but that is another option. Um, so you could use a bit of duct tape, or some people have sleeves that can just slide over the microphone um, with these on. Um, I hate microphones at weddings personally. Um, I would never rely on them only. So that's why I, like I said, I put these microphones on the people doing the readings and the talking as the primary source and have backups. Now, if all of that fails, on my B cam, I have this microphone. Um, so if I've got that pointing at the bride, um, then that's quite close. But if it's at the back of the ceremony, um, Oh God, if I had to rely on that audio, that would be absolutely shocking. I just have this for mainly um, when it comes to syncing up in the editing process. But you know, it's there if I need it. It's quite a decent little microphone. And again, my um, other Rode shotgun mic that I'm talking to on now, I have that on my A cam that I'm recording on as we speak. Um, and that's always pointing at, that's quite close and pointing at the bride and groom. Um, Again, I'd have to probably do a bit of post work trying to boost the audio and clean it up, but at least it's audio um, at the ceremony if everything if everything goes wrong. There was one little audio um, device I forgot to mention, which was um, this little Olympus uh, DM550. Now, I've got three of these. When I first started out, um, I had these as sort of backup mics as well, which I'll place on the tables. Um, I don't actually use these anymore, but it's in my equipment bag if I need it. So that is how I record audio. Um, I try and keep it as simple as possible. So basically it's put one of these on everyone who's doing a reading and the registrar and this one on the groom and then put my backup mics where I can. You know, you might want to spend, if you are serious about wedding films, um, audio plays such a big part of the day. Um, so I highly recommend investing in a bit of equipment. Even straight away, you could, you know, you could get away with four of these. Um, but you want some backups as well. Uh, but like I said, these are £89. So um, these are just handy to um, sort of build your equipment up. They have just released the TX660, um, which, because I've got six of these, I probably won't buy them. I've looked at reviews on uh, YouTube, and there's a subtle difference, um, but for the price, well, like I say, I've got six. For the price, I'd still probably get the 650, to be honest. Um, but at the moment, as of today, um, these are hard to buy. That's, that's how popular they are. Um, so yeah, really hard to buy. In a couple of weeks, I will be releasing a video on what settings I use um, for this. Um, 
as well as in the weeks to come, loads of different videos relating to the wedding films. Um, there won't be a wedding, um, a YouTube video next week as I am filming my second to last wedding next Friday of the, of this year, not over, um, of 2021 weddings. My second from last is next Friday and my last one's the day after on the Saturday. So um, I know I will be using everything I've discussed today to record um, the wedding ceremony. So if you have any questions, please uh, let me know in, in the comments below. Um, if there's any certain type of videos that you want me to, or issues that you want me to talk about, um, again, just comment below and let me know. So smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.